You have demanding client, clients, and I'm sure in this environment they have to be asking a lot about economic conditions and more importantly, what's next? Every single investor is asking, how should I invest? And we're telling them every single investor needs to have a health check at the moment on their portfolios, right? Mm -hmm. We've been through an unbelievable year last year where global markets were hit, both on the equity side, down 20%, fixed income simultaneously falling at 16%. We had so many rate hikes. We had an inflationary uh, situation. Now pivoting into this year, mm -hmm. I think it's going to look very different. So we're advising our clients to start making some shifts. We think we're going to reach peak interest rates uh, in this next uh, hiking cycle tomorrow. Right. We're seeing in, uh, the inflation numbers coming down steadily. Right. China's open, so we're seeing a yeah. early growth out of that region as well. well so a lot of things that we're doing differently. Let's talk about the Fed, because, I mean, the Fed does make that big monetary policy decision tomorrow. The expectation is we get another rate hike, 25 basis points at minimum. Yeah. But most folks in the market, at least in public markets, have basically started to price out the possibility of any additional hikes and even starting to price in rate cuts. Right. Do you think that this is it, that we have sort of reached that peak in this cycle and now we're going to see, at least see, if not cuts, some stability there? So we believe that tomorrow's hike at likely 25 basis points, a 10th hike since the beginning of last year, will likely be one of the last hikes that we're going to see. We're probably going to see those rates remaining quite flattish towards mm -hmm. the end of the year. And then we may start to see some cutting of the rates as the unemployment numbers flow through. I mean, you're seeing all the layoffs that are happening right at this very moment. As mm -hmm. the unemployment numbers flow through, as we see continued pressure in corporate earnings, we think 10 percent more downside on corporate earnings flow through, you may start to see them uh, take down the rates towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. Are you anticipating a recession? We are. We are anticipating a mild recession, likely in the next quarter or two. Um, and as you know, we never reach uh, bear mar market bottoms until midpoints in recessions. Mm -hmm. So therefore, as an investor, you've got to make sure that we're buckling down a little bit for the near-term volatility that's going to happen on the equity side, uh, but making sure that you're not waiting too long, right, to, yeah. uh, to miss the run-up that's potentially going to happen towards the end of this year. I'm curious about client flows and, and where that money goes, where it's being allocated. Sure. Obviously, the big story over the last few months has been about a lot of the money going into money markets. But really, a lot of people have really been embracing cash for quite some time. Fixed income obviously became popular because of the higher rates and the returns that you're going to get there. And of course, this long structural shift we've seen embracing private markets. So we saw a lot of shift from cash positions into fixed income, particularly mm -hmm. short-term enhanced liquidity like muni municipal bonds, like treasuries, where you can get a very decent high single-digit yield. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of shift already from cash into fixed income. Secondly, we're Was that shift, though, into fixed income? Was that longer duration or people just asking, get me something to sort of tie me over or whatever we're going through right now? It's a little bit of both. Some of the uh, disconnect that we're seeing in the municipal markets and the ability to get high single digits, uh, 7 8 percent on intermediate municipal bond portfolios is very attractive for longer term investors. Mm -hmm. And likewise, when you look at a six month treasury yielding 5 percent, mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty attractive for a shorter period time duration as well. So mm -hmm. it's a, little, a combination of both. But on the equity side, we've been pivoting a lot into what we call unstoppable trends, uh, high quality dividend paying stocks, yeah. but three unstoppable trends that we like very much as industries. Healthcare being one of them, okay. uh, digitization, deep tech, okay. uh, as well as clean energy. So those are three areas that we think are going to be unstoppable growth uh, industries in the coming years ahead. Healthcare makes sense to me. Uh, I guess uh, at the same time, when you say digitization, is artificial intelligence a component of that as well? It is. Yeah. So we're talking artificial intelligence. We're talking cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Every single investor we speak to around the world, cyber is one of the top three things on their minds. Mm -hmm. The spending into that industry is only going to increase over time. Yeah. Uh, so it is uh, going to be an enormous opportunity for. Where people. are the investment opportunities though? There are, are there going to be just with kind of like at least in the public space with the behemoths like a Microsoft or an Alphabet, or is it more directly into smaller companies that are really kind at the forefront and building this up? So we do it in a couple of different ways. Yeah. We express it through public equities and companies that play in cyber and that are dominating in cyber. Mm -hmm. We also do direct investing and private equity as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we provide different types of, of options to explore with our clients to, to capture that cyber uh, cyber opportunity globally. Uh, the private bank at, at City has grown. Jane Frazier has made it clear that it's a priority here. Is. What is the growth story for that business? Where are you trying to expand? 
So we um, view uh, the private bank and wealth as one of the five interconnected businesses here at City. Mm -hmm. So we aim to not only provide services and wealth management solutions to our clients, but we also do so for their families and mm -hmm. their companies around the world pretty seamlessly, mm -hmm. leveraging the extraordinarily global and institutional platform that we have here at City. Mm -hmm. So on the wealth management side, helping our clients and their families with global wealth management and investment needs, balance sheet management, as well as wealth planning, legacy planning, philanthropic endeavors too. And then we plug their companies in to our investment bank, our markets business, mm -hmm. our treasury trade solutions business, and the like to help their companies around the world too. So fully comprehensive, fully global. We're the most global private bank in the world. Are there certain areas of the, of the globe, certain geographies that maybe potentially offer a little bit more growth? Well, we, we've always been very focused on uh, the growth opportunities in the regions around the world, being the most global private bank. We do see that there's some opportunities um, spiking up in the Asia-Pacific region. We're seeing that already, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. with the opening of, of uh, China. Uh, we're seeing the first quarter GDP numbers there coming in stronger than analyst estimates at 4.5%. Mm -hmm. um, you're seeing the consumption remain very strong amongst yeah. the middle class. And you're seeing still the, uh, the amount of innovation that's happening there in, in technology and robotics, AI, as yeah. well as in clean energy. Um, very, very attractive opportunities. And you're still seeing a lot of those cross-border flows of money when it comes to investments. I mean, there's so much concern about geopolitics, yes. whether the era of globalization has yes. been totally fractured. Yes. But you're still seeing those flows cross-borders. We are seeing the yeah. flows, and we're seeing an increase increased urgency to diversify geographically, especially with the G2 polarization of the United States and China and the bifurcation there. There'll be a lot of countries that will benefit from that, including mm -hmm. countries in Southeast Asia from the new trade, right, from the new trading patterns. Mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, the United States with Mexico, and India also as a country uh, that's going to benefit from the, the, the repositioning of the trade flows.